Stephen Hull's 2021 novel, Maxwell's Demon, might be one of the most downright electrifying books I've ever read. It's been a while since I've encountered a novel that scratches so many of my metaphysical and metafictional itches, all while pulling off a high wire act that combines speculative physics with ingenious literary trickery that just left my brain sizzling. At first glance, Maxwell's Demon might seem like your standard mystery novel. A missing person, an inquisitive protagonist, a series of cryptic messages that demand to be unraveled. But Hall takes what could have been a straightforward mystery and layers it with a hefty dose of the surreal and the philosophical, plunging you into a world where reality bends like a funhouse mirror and the laws of physics just feel like suggestions. The book is named after the thought experiment by James Clerk Maxwell, which postulates a demon that can, at first glance, break the second law of thermodynamics. And indeed, this thought experiment is not only directly relevant to the plot, but the book itself is a sort of entropy-defying work of literary sleight of hand. This novel is a detective story, sure, but the case comprises mysteries of mythology and literature and religion and science. It asks questions you just don't typically find in detective fiction. Can entropy be reversed? Are there ways to unwrite reality? Ways to rewrite the very fabric of existence? It's truly wild stuff, but Hall's hand is steady, and he never lets the esoteric nature of the subject matter derail the incredibly exciting narrative. Hall's prose in Maxwell's Demon is almost like a literary incantation. He manages to straddle the line between accessible and arcane, pulling you into this Borgesian labyrinth of ideas without totally overwhelming you. Hall is not afraid to lead you down a rabbit hole of scientific theorizing or philosophical musing or eschatological soothsaying only to snap you back to the immediate story just as you're starting to wonder where in the world this is all headed. What he achieves here is truly remarkable. The book's structure itself feels like a balancing of order and chaos, much like the very concept of entropy that lies at its heart. Our protagonist, Thomas Quinn, is a struggling writer who's haunted by his father's shadow. His father, Dr. Stanley Quinn, was an almost archetypal great author whose posthumous fame looms large in Thomas's life. There's a sort of undertone of Greek tragedy in Quinn's story. He's fated to confront his father's legacy while spiraling through his own existential crisis. His father had an assistant and protege named Andrew Black, who wrote a novel called Cupid's Engine that was so good that people called him Stanley Quinn's spiritual son, another bruise to Thomas's ego. His wife is on a year-long research trip halfway across the world, and though he does get to talk to her on the phone from time to time, he only gets to see her through a webcam feed, a feed the rest of the world gets to see too. Things get weird when he misses a phone call one day that sounds as if it's his father from beyond the grave. And this message sends him down a rabbit hole that sees Thomas wrestling not only with his father's literary ghost, but with the very fabric of reality that might or might not be bending around him. The supporting characters in this book feel like real fleshed out people, but they also feel like puzzle pieces or tiles in the wild mosaic that Hall is building. 
characters like Sophie Almonds and the elusive Andrew Black aren't just narrative foils. They're part of the architecture of this universe. They hint at grander schemes and darker mysteries. And ultimately, they suggest that each person here is a pawn in a cosmic game they can barely comprehend. The metafictional elements in the book are half the fun. Maxwell's demon doesn't just nod to its literary status, it revels in it. Hall constantly draws attention to the constructed nature of storytelling, making readers question what's real and what's fabrication. You can almost feel Hall winking at you as he layers truth over lie and then commands you to figure out which is which. He plays with form, with narrative voice, and even with the physical layout of the book in a couple of ergodic passages, creating an experience that demands not just your attention, but your participation. There's a delightful irony in watching Quinn, a writer, try to puzzle out a mystery that seems to defy the very conventions of narrative. The book is full of these sly moments that make you question the relationship between author and reader and creator and creation. Every detail feels loaded with meaning, as if you're being dared to look closer, to read not just the words on the page, but the spaces between them. At its core, Maxwell's Demon is a book about the tension between order and chaos, a mystery that sits at the intersection of physics and philosophy. The titular demon is more than just a clever reference. It's a symbol of the impossible, the idea that maybe there's a way to cheat entropy, to reverse time. It's heady, speculative stuff, and Hall uses it to pose questions that feel dizzyingly profound. Can we change the fundamental nature of reality, or are we all just actors in a predetermined play, bound by the laws of physics as much as by the whims of fate? Hall uses the demon and the thought experiment as a symbol, as a haunting reminder of our own limitations and the tantalizing possibility that those limitations could be transcended. It's a beautiful, breathtaking concept, and Hall presents it with both reverence and a touch of mischief. I found Maxwell's Demon to be a masterpiece that defies easy categorization. It's a mystery novel, yes, but it's also a work of philosophy, a meditation on entropy and mythology, and a piece of metafiction that revels in its own artifice. This book isn't content to simply entertain. It wants to make you think, to twist your brain into knots and leave you questioning the nature of existence. What makes Maxwell's Demon truly exceptional is the way it's ending totally recontextualizes the entire book. Hall masterfully crafts a finale that doesn't just tie up loose ends. It shifts the entire narrative into a new dimension of understanding, making you question everything you've just read. It turns the story on its head and practically begs you to return to the first page immediately, but this time armed with new knowledge. And that's really the true genius of this book. You, the reader, become the entropy-defying demon from Maxwell's thought experiment with your newfound understanding on a subsequent read-through, serving to reverse the entropy in the closed system that is these 330 pages between two covers. I loved this book. I 
devoured it in something like three sittings. And in my tier ranking of the books I've read in 2024, I place Maxwell's Demon right here, just behind Roadside Picnic, just ahead of Gateway. Stephen Hall has crafted something truly rare and remarkable with this novel. While it may not reach the same emotional heights as Roadside Picnic, it certainly holds its own as a brilliant, beautiful, and unforgettable book. Its complexity and the ingenuity of its storytelling have already drawn me back for a partial reread, and I have no doubt that I will return to fully experience it again in the very near future. If you've read Maxwell's Demon, I would love nothing more than to discuss it with you down below. Otherwise, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching.